So welcome to the, um, the closing session. Honorable ministers, excellencies, and all distinguished participants, we have now reached the end of the Africa Regional Review Meeting. And I can truly say it was a great success and uh, benefiting greatly from all the interactions among the different stakeholders. But uh, let us first turn to the adoption of the draft political declaration by the LDCs from Africa and Haiti. This document has been distributed in English by the, dele the delegation of Malawi in New York through your missions. The political declaration was extensively considered by our experts in New York and respective capitals and agreed by consensus after several rounds of consultations. I believe we all have seen the text earlier and endorsed it. With this understanding, I would like to place this draft political declaration before you for adoption. And to say further that if there is no objection, the political declaration is hereby adopted. As you know, in addition to the main program, we also had uh, three very interesting side events. First, on Tuesday, we had a side event on youth. Our SDG accelerators in LDCs, organized by the government of Malawi with the support of the UN Malawi Resident Coordinator's Office. Second, two events on Wednesday. One on empowering LDCs through science, technology, and innovation. Lessons learned, organized by the UN Technology Bank for the LDCs. And the other was on impacts of COVID-19 on SMEs in LDCs and the role of blended finance in supporting a resilient recovery, organized by the UN Capital Development Foundation. I would now like to give the floor to the organizers of the side events, to each provide us with uh, the highlights of the side events in five minutes. And uh, I am going to be very strict on time. First, I would like to give the floor to Honorable Ulemu Sungama MP, who is the Minister of Youth and Sports in the Republic of Malawi to give an overview of the outcomes of the side event on youth as SDGs accelerators in the LDCs. Honorable Uremu Usungama, you have five minutes to tell us. Over to you, sir. Uh, right Honorable Dr. Salos Kraus Kilima, the Vice President of the Republic of Malawi, Fellow ministers, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. It gives me great pleasure to provide a summary of the side events team, Youth are Sustainable Development Goals at Serena's in least developed countries. That was uh, co hosted by the government of Malawi and the United Nations of Malawi on uh, Tuesday, 23rd February. The main objective of the event was to showcase inspiring and uh, innovative uh, initiatives presently championed by the youth in Malawi and how they are helping to transform communities, as well as uh, providing a platform for sharing ideas on how to achieve sustainable development in least developed countries by 2030. The side event also intended to influence policymakers participating uh, in the Africa Region Review Meeting to focus their attention on uh, youth and uh, SDG accelerators in their preparations for the fifth UN conference on LODC. I'm happy to report that we, 
provided an uh, interactive learning platform where youth in Malawi and uh, across Africa were able to appreciate what their colleagues are doing and had the opportunity to ask questions to gain insight on how the initiatives could be emulated elsewhere. And applauded the exhibitions that were showcased and the youth discussions on uh, several social media platforms, including the page for the fifth UN conference on LODCs. This will help to continue to raise awareness on youth potential and uh, issues that were raised during the event beyond this meeting. The key message is that the youth themselves delivered for our government's attention and consideration included the following. Number one, LDCs will not achieve sustainable development if uh, the majority of the population, including the youth, are left out of uh, national development processes. Government should uh, meaningfully engage young people and provide a conducive environment for the youth to participate at all levels of uh, decision making. And the government should put in place deliberate system and platforms that help strengthen them and uh, maintain engagement, social contact, dialogue and trust with young people. This should include treating the youth not only as beneficiaries, but key partners in development by taking on board their ideas on matters concerning socioeconomic development. There should be provision for enough opportunities and uh, the necessary incentives to effectively develop the potential of the youth through capital financing, linkage uh, to market both locally and internationally and exposing the youth to fully exploit their potential. The need for LODCs to reform education system to allow for the development of skills and talents that are consistent with the demands of the job market. That should include preparing the, uh, the young people for digital age and awareness on the importance of uh, conserving the environment as we fight against climate change challenges. As we build up the fifth UN conference on LDCs in Doha in January 2022, I hereby appeal to my fellow ministers and all development partners to recognize the potential that the, uh, that the youth have in uh, attaining sustainable socioeconomic transformation in LDCs which can only be harnessed in LDC uh, if create if LDC, if LDC create uh, a conducive environment for the youth to take action. We, we have a, you should be winding down, Mr. Minister. Be less assured, I'll be winding in less than a minute. Government's uh, strategic partnership with the youth in uh, ravaging their innovation, creative ideas, and uh, resourcefulness cannot be overemphasized. Also, government and the international development agencies must take into consideration youth employment, skills development, and gender empowerment as top priorities in all national, regional, and uh, international development agenda. In the face of no action, LODC lists a broken social public and uh, and exodus of youth elsewhere in search of opportunities. More importantly, we are unlikely to end poverty, ensure gender equality, reverse climate change, and achieve the SDGs by 2030 if we fail to empower our young people. I thank you for your attention. Thank you. Um, thank you very much, Honorable. The Minister of Youth and Sports uh, in the Republic of Malawi for this uh, uh, stimulating perspective. We recall that on Monday, Mr. Nixon Pasolini, the representative of the youth, said, I quote, young people are necessary resources that need to be maximized and constitute an opportunity for our progress. It is young people's rights to be included in processes that affect their present and future nothing about us without us, end quote. 
I'm sure this also summarizes the views of our youth. To proceed, I would now like to give the floor to Mr. Joshua Sejipa, Managing Director of the UN Technology Bank for LDCs, to present highlights on the side event held by the bank on the theme, Empowering LDCs through Science, Technology and Innovation, Lessons Learned. Uh, Mr. Sejipa, you have the floor and you have five minutes. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Dr. Chilima, Vice President and Chair of the Africa Regional Review Meeting, Honorable Ministers, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen. Allow me to first congratulate the government of Malawi for successfully hosting this Africa Regional Review Meeting uh, this week. Several sessions and side events held this week have provided the platform for sharing a wealth of knowledge, experiences and opportunities for the LDCs to prepare for the fifth UN Conference for LDCs. Chair, I have the honor to present the summary report of the side event organized by the UN Technology Bank in collaboration with the government of Malawi, the government of Turkey, and the UN Economic Commission for Africa under the theme, Empowering LDCs Through Science, Technology, and Innovation, Lessons Learned. The side event featured the Technology Bank's activities which support LDCs in enhancing their science, technology, and innovation capacity to build sustainable and productive capacities and promote structural economic transformation and early results in selected African LDCs. The event also outlined the challenges faced by LDCs as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic and how to build, back up, uh, how to build better in the post-COVID-19 recovery. The event was graced by the following uh, dignitaries. His Excellency, Mr. Gospel Kazako, the Minister of Information of the Republic of Malawi, the Honorable Dr. Eliora Tumsewe, the Minister of Science, Technology and Innovation of Uganda, Dr. Solomon Benwa, Director General of Science, Research Affairs, Minister of Science and Higher Education of Ethiopia, Professor Hassan Manda, President of the Scientific and Technological Research Council of Turkey, Dr. Victor Konde, Scientific Affairs Officer of the UN Commission for Africa. And the following is a summary of the outcome of the discussion in, the, in this event. The following key messages uh, came up uh, as an outcome of this uh, session, uh, Mr. Chairman. The first is that science and technology and innovation is critical for the development and achievement of sustainable development. Second, capacity development is critical for building productive capacities and structural transformation. And third, enhancing research and development capacity in LDCs to facilitate commercialization of innovation is critically important. Fourth, that STI should be integrated into national development trends and through partnerships and coordination across the ecosystem. Fifth, sustainable development requires research and development and innovation from basic sciences to engineering, as well as in the social sciences and humanities. And sixth, that digital transformation and ICT connectivity are critical to stimulate competitiveness and facilitate the export of value-added products from the LDCs. And seventh, Increasing investment in STI and R&D through collaboration between the private sector and academia to enhance innovation and competitiveness is also very critical. And eighth, facilitating technology transfer to LDCs and promotion of awareness of intellectual property rights to protect innovation from LDCs is also equally important. And last but not least, providing financial and in-kind resources to the technology bank to continue supporting the LDCs to enhance the STI capacities is also very critical. I thank you, Chair, for this uh, opportunity. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Sitipa, for actually uh, doing it in less than five minutes. Uh, we know that science, uh, technology, and innovation was certainly one of the most discussed issues in the week. It is people go to all dimensions of development, from productive capacity to social sectors. It is also crucial uh, to end the COVID-19 pandemic and uh, prepare us uh, for future crisis. And uh, to share the last, uh, you know, uh, uh, insights on, on the third event, it will be Ms. Preti Senior, who is the Executive Secretary of the UN Capital Development Fund, uh, and she will be talking to us about financing for SMEs and LDCs, and the role of blended finance in supporting a resilient recovery from COVID-19. Thank you. 
the screen. Hello, um, I hope everybody can hear me. So good morning, good afternoon, excellencies, ambassadors, permanent representatives, colleagues. I would like to bring to you the results that we um, discussed during the session, as the chair just pointed out, on the impact of COVID-19 on SMEs in LDCs and the role of blended finance in supporting a resilient recovery. We started this session uh, with uh, my colleagues uh, from UNCDF giving an overview of our blended finance report regarding investment in the LDCs. As we know, the amount of uh, the blended finance going into LDCs is not large. And this is something we would like to tackle as an outcome of this Africa Regional Review. We would like to increase the amount and size of blended finance going into the LDCs. So therefore we have to address uh, some of the discussion items uh, as to what is the current situation and what needs to be done. So first uh, there was a, point made about the lack of knowledge, perhaps, of the markets. So we feel that uh, the global capital markets need further exposure to, to the LDCs, to the governance, to the opportunities there. In that context, um, the difficulty in terms of the size of the deals uh, going into the LDCs versus the size of investment um, made, you know, an example was given that a conversation held with a $90 billion uh, fund managed by seven people um, has a minimum ticket size of 1 billion. So what can we do to increase or aggregate um, projects in LDCs so that we can tap some of the bigger flows of capital? So there was a point around the aggregation that might be needed for us to come together in the countries and create perhaps a portfolio of let's say uh, solar energy projects. So then th that becomes a bigger um, sort of investment opportunity. So this whole discussion about the real or perceived uh, risk uh, aspects is a key uh, item and therefore we need to address it. And one of the solutions was, uh, which I would like to support is engaging the ministers directly with the some of the institutional investors in the presence of donors and UN as intermediating or creating that kind of uh, information flow between the two sides. So we proposed to the Minister of Industry of Malawi who was on that uh, session that we could have a uh, sort of a virtual at the moment a road show where we would um, uh, make a, a panel where we could have the LDC ministers and we could have institutional investors and donors and UNCDF. So that was one concrete um, sort of outcome that came out of this discussion. Uh, there was discussion also that there are challenges even on domestic uh, capital markets, that the domestic banks uh, are also little risk of us of investing in SMEs. And as we know, SMEs form the backbone of the LDCs. So what can we do to encourage domestic banks to lend? And again, this whole, uh, you know, concept of guarantees of uh, first loss, all these items that could help private capital move into an investment strategy for SMEs and LDCs are things that we need to deliberate and work upon. So even engaging the domestic banks and seeing what could be methods by which they would be then willing to lend to SMEs in their own economies is something we need to discuss. So that would be uh, an outcome number two from this session. Um, we had uh, an interesting mix of ministers um, and uh, blended fund. Uh, you know, UNCDF is working with a, a fund we are creating called BUILD, which is to invest in SMEs in the LDCs. So we had uh, the fund manager there. We had somebody who runs Convergence, which is a blended um, finance sort of forum. And uh, there was very interesting discussion between the size of the capital markets in the LDCs, you know, the perception of risk, the economies, the, the deals that need to be made. So we would like to encourage uh, a very strong pipeline development uh, coming out of the LDCs. And this is a role that UNCDF as well plays. Uh, my colleagues work very closely with uh, several of uh, the governments 
in uh, creating these bankable projects. So what we try to do is use catalytic capital that could seed uh, either you know the entrepreneurs or the agencies so that bigger money can be unlocked. So very key on unlocking larger capital with an injection of um, you know a seed capital to um, unlock that that aspect of investment. Um, so we would feel in general, uh, we need to increase the information as well flowing from the LDCs. There's a lack of information uh, in terms of economy and deals and projects, and therefore this sort of um, lack of access of data by investors is also another point uh, that needs to be addressed so that, again, that flow can be more um, smooth and um, greater. So the whole focus for this panel was on blended finance. Um, and we would also, we also had contributions by uh, donors and the donors are very much present and willing to be, be with um, the LDCs. We were deliberating ways on which to make ODA more catalytic. So again, uh, you know, if those blended funds uh, means that the first loss uh, is provided by the donor and then an additional larger amount can be galvanized from the private sector. So using ODA more catalytically was a discussion that was also held. So I believe uh, those would be some of the key points of uh, greater information, greater project pipeline, uh, more data on one hand, and more engagement, direct engagement, perhaps uh, very uh, you know, qualified uh, people on both sides. Uh, perhaps it may, it needs a forum to bring the direct connection um, to the table and um, creating catalytic uh, capital, um, which can unlock greater capital. So these were uh, some of the recommendations uh, while realizing you know, the difficulties that the SMEs are having and the impact of COVID is direct on them. So both with global markets and also with domestic capital markets, uh, working with domestic banks. So we would like to put this on the agenda. So broadly, I would say maybe these four or five points would be some things we would like to take forward from this meeting. I thank you for your attention. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Ms. Sinia, for uh, flag flagging those uh, important uh, issues on financing, as well as letting us to focus on innovative sources and explore uh, what form of finance is based for which purpose, and also how the risks uh, can actually be shared. Uh, as we move on, I would like uh, now to invite Her Excellency Fekita Tsukaman, the High Representative for LDCs, LLDCs, and SIDs, and the Secretary General for the Fifth UN Conference on LDCs, for her close, uh, closing remarks. Uh, you have the floor, Excellency. Thank you, Your Excellency, Dr. Chilima, Vice President of the Republic of Malawi, Excellencies, colleagues, ladies and gentlemen. We are closing a week long, intense, enlightening and productive conversation. I express my deep gratitude to you, Dr. Chilima, and to the government of the Republic of Malawi for hosting us. Thank you so much for making us feel like being in the warm heart of Africa. We received such great collaboration at all levels from Ambassador Ligoya and the mission here in New York to the coordination team in Linlongwe. We owe a special thanks also to the resident coordinator, Maria Jose Macho and her team for their partnership. More than 900 registered participants were with us for these five days, 28 out of 33 African LDCs plus Haiti were represented. His Excellency, Dr. Chagwira, President of the Republic of Malawi addressed us. We heard from many ministers and other officials from LDCs. We heard from development partners, from representatives of the private sector and civil society, including academia and youth. We are of course grateful to all of you for sharing your experience and insights. It was a dialogue and participation needed to move forward. We learned a lot from each other and we must continue the discussion started this week. This could also not have not been uh, done without the support of the government of Turkey in Qatar. 
it was uh, also a truly one UN meeting. I especially thank FAO, UNDP, the Technology Bank and UNCDF for the excellent collaboration to make this meeting a success. Representatives from almost 30 United Nations organizations shared their analysis and ideas on how to go forward on our road to Doha, Qatar for the fifth UN conference on LDCs in January, 2022. We look forward to continuing the work with all of you over the next 11 months. The summary of the meeting will feed into the work of the preparatory committee. The first meeting of the preparatory committee will take place at the end of May. You can find information on the entire preparatory process for LDC5 on OHR LLS website. We've had a rich discussion and brought together concrete ideas. I cannot possibly summarize them all right now, but let me highlight a few key points. Just as elsewhere, COVID-19 has profoundly serious consequences for the lives and livelihoods of LDCs in Africa and Haiti. Building back better will be a challenge, but there's hope when people and countries work together. For example, Senegal is sharing technology and vaccines with neighbors and several development partners recognize the need for solidarity and are increasing resources for COVAX and other global initiatives. Several speakers mentioned that the pandemic, while it affects everyone in different ways, also presents an opportunity to do things differently and accelerate true transformation. One example is the need to transform the digital divide into a digital bridge. For this, we need to make sure an ecosystem of digital transformation is in place. This includes affordable broadband access and digital fluency with the right skills, especially for young people. Digital transformation goes uh, so very much beyond improving productive capacity. It can give a voice to people, create an innovative partnership, and indeed a bridge between so many and on so much. Then there's the important area of trade. The, re the recently launched Africa Continental Free Trade Area provides additional market access opportunities for African LDCs. There's great untapped potential in e-commerce and opportunities for LDCs to integrate into regional and global value chains. Of course, physical infrastructure like transport systems is important, but investing in and making the soft infrastructures, including regulatory customs and business environment work is equally important. Aid for trade, plays a critical role. We must look into strengthening those sectors and value chains that have the greatest potential for poverty reduction and inclusiveness and streamlining of the gender dimension. Just this morning, we talked about climate risks and how sustainable energy can be part of the solution. If we do not take mitigation and adaptation to climate change more seriously, we will not achieve any of our goals. If we just look at agriculture, which is the sector with the highest employment in almost all African LDCs in Haiti, it is clear that poverty and hunger are bound to increase if we do not reduce uh, CO2 emissions. But there are also many solutions available and these will be further discussed at COP26 in November this year. OHR LLS has provided support to Malawi to develop access to sustainable energy in the country. We plan to provide a platform to share Malawi's experience with other LDCs. These opportunities for peer learning are crucial to share lessons and concrete solutions. Of course, a lot of this hinges on the availability of resources. The LDCs need to put their resources into action and prioritize inclusive and sustainable development for all their citizens. All stakeholders need to stop the diversion of resources, be it through illicit financial flows or corruption. There's also the need for more external finance, but the right kind. This ranges from ODA that is effective. Effectiveness in, includes being aligned with country priorities and supports the mobilization of other resources, includes improving tax administrations and includes looking for blended finance. It also includes working towards changing the risk perception of LDCs. It also means that it is now that we must deal with unsustainable debt levels. 
measures must be taken that are responsible, innovative, and lead to long-term solutions, such as debt cancellation, debt swaps, and debt workouts. Last, but by uh, no means least, we need to work more closely with the private sector. We are often told money is there, but we need to channel private finance into sustainable development action that contributes to job creation. We need a better policy environment and conditions for micro, small and medium enterprises. We should pay special attention to enterprises run by women and ensure they can be more productive and contribute towards transforming LDC's economies. I would like to close my remarks by highlighting the importance of youth in this process. I'm grateful for the youth representatives that took the time to contribute to our discussion. We need your optimism, but also your realism. You know that the problems we face are huge, but we have the power to solve them if we work together in solidarity. We need to listen more to you. We need to much more um, intergenerational dialogue. And this is your future we're talking about. There's a lot of work ahead. Failure is not an option and we must craft a roadmap for a better future for the LDCs together. For this to work, we need political will and effective partnerships across all sectors and all borders. We must build back better and greener for all and enhance the resilience uh, to future shocks. I thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Your Excellency, for uh, those encouraging remarks. And uh, <clears throat> at this juncture, I would like to invite uh, the Honorable Minister from uh, uh, Lesotho, Honorable Mohabi Mohabiyani, the Minister of Energy and Meteorology of Lesotho, to deliver a vote of thanks. Uh, you have the floor, Honorable Minister. Right Honorable Dr. Saulos Klaus Chilema, Vice President of the Republic of Malawi, Madam Fekitamuela Katawati Kamano, sorry if I misspelled the name, Under Secretary General OHR LLS and Secretary General of LDC5. Excellencies, distinguished delegates, Ladies and gentlemen, I take the floor today to express gratitude on behalf of all the delegates to the Republic of Malawi for hosting this meeting. To the various ministers, ministries and departments for their commitment and tireless efforts to make this, this meeting a success. That is evident from the large number of registration and participation in the different sessions. I would also like to thank the UN Secretariat with special mention to OHR, LLS, and UNECA for their logistical and behind scenes support. I note the time difference that exists between the different participants and thank you to all colleagues and delegates in the various roles they have played, be it moderator, panelist, discussant, and most importantly, participant from participants for making this meeting and its discussions beneficial to all of us. As a result, we managed to engage more on lessons learned and how to improve the implementation of LDC agenda through promoting private sector, especially the micro, small and medium enterprises, mobilization of financial resources for sustainable development, enhancing trade, improving productive capacity cities and building a conducive infrastructure platform and enhanced technology base. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, COVID-19 has impacted the way we work as evidenced by this virtual setting in which we have met. This has confirmed even further that we indeed must explore more innovative ways of implementing the next program of action and other development agendas if we are to realize the desired outcomes for sustainable and equitable economic growth in our Africa region. With the virtual setting, we have shown that we will not let the current situation derail us from our plans 
and hope that we have for the future of our continent. It also indicates and highlights the keen interest that we have in LDC's issues and wide efforts being made to find solutions to LDC's challenges in pursuit of a dynamic, action-oriented and transformative program of action with strengthened partnerships in the next decade. In that regard, it is encouraging to know that these meetings were attended by all categories of stakeholders including the private sector, NGOs, the youth and international organizations. For those who could not make it to these meetings, we invite you to participate in all other forthcoming meetings on the road to Doha for the LDC5 conference. We look forward to continued engagement by all stakeholders and parties and trust that we will all be together in Doha 2022. I thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Oro Minister, for uh, uh, that vote of thanks. We have a slot uh, just in case uh, there are representatives of member states that would like to make, you know, any remarks, one or two, really for one minute each. And, and if there is none, I can proceed with uh, my closing remarks. Anybody? Right. Thank you very much. Once again, excellencies and uh, distinguished delegates, uh, let me close as follows, and, and I'll take it in six or seven parts. First, lessons learned. We started this meeting by reflecting on the implementation of the Istanbul program of action, which is coming to an end. There are many lessons to be learned, but I think the most important one is that we need to improve on actions so that we achieve what we agree. It is therefore crucial to link the decade up, the decade of action for the SDGs to the upcoming program of action. And this is the one. I mean, in 2022. The second is the COVID-19. We also discussed how COVID-19 is reversing our hard on development gains. We're aware that this is true for all countries, but for the LDCs, it has worsened our vulnerabilities, including those from climate change, which may prolong our recovery. We are hopeful, however, that we will be you know, finding innovative ways to build back better, cleaner, and stronger. The role of institutions in discussing the nexus between peace and development, we highlighted this, the strong institutional land systems, including the rule of law, human rights, and justices, are fundamental pillars of sustainable development. Regional and international trade, we also reiterated the importance of enhancing intra-African regional trade through the African Continental Free Trade Agreement and efforts of integrating LDCs into the multilateral trade system through enhanced transport infrastructure networks and improved productive capacity of our economies. Our discussions highlighted the roles that various initiatives of the World Trade Organization and other institutions such as Aid for Trade, Enhanced in the Credit Framework, and Special and Differential Preferences, among others, play in scaling up trade competitiveness and effective participation of LTCs in both regional and global value chains. Domestic and international resource mobilization. We agreed on the need for more strategic and innovative ways of resource mobilization, particularly in capital markets for LDCs. We discussed how essential it is to lower the cost of remittances to allow for expansion in domestic resource mobilization by diversifying our resource pool to private financing. Furthermore, we noted the need to accelerate financial inclusion through the adoption of financial technology financing solutions, which will catalyze domestic resources and help build inclusive digital economies which are crucial for enhanced resilience to shocks. 
We concluded on the establishment of frameworks for partnerships among LDCs for long-term resolution on the debt crisis. We also shared the impacts of illicit financial flows that divert resources from the SDGs and the need for reforms and partnerships at regional and global levels to help them. Structural transformation. LDCs have to embrace structural uh, transformation, which entails the transitioning from agriculture to manufacturing, innovations to utilize our abundant resources, and focus on value, value creation and retention in the value chain. ICT is a crucial tool for achieving such transformation and should be deployed as a key enabler in unlocking economic activities. This transformation should be inclusive and must embrace both women and the youth. While we cannot ever exhaust every aspect discussed in this meeting, I can assure you that all the ideas for a new program of action will be included in the summary report, and this report will be submitted to the preparatory committee of the fifth UN conference on LDCs, which will feed into a new program for action for the LDCs. Before closing the meeting, allow me to thank Our Excellency Chukamanu and your team, which coordinated with us in the long way for the tremendous work done in organizing this meeting. Our teams have worked together tirelessly to ensure its success. I further wish uh, to thank the rest of the UN agencies that contributed to the success of this meeting starting with the Economic Commission for Africa, which organized the meeting with us, and the resident coordinator, and the whole UN team here in Malawi, who helped us with organization, including the youth side events. In addition, I wish to give special thanks to the Office of the Special Advisor on Africa, the Food and Agriculture Organization, and the United Nations Development Program for co-organizing individual sessions. I know that there are many more who contributed to the success of this meeting, not least all the distinguished speakers and panelists who generous, generously shared their time and ideas with us. I assure you that your input will feed into the ODC5 process. I would also like to thank all participants for your active participation and substantive contributions. I look forward to meeting you again and hopefully in person, let us at the LDC5 conference in Doha in January 2022. At last but not least, I would like to thank the government of Turkey for hosting LDC4 conference and the government of Qatar as host of incoming LTC5 for their invaluable support to the cause of the LDCs. There is a lot of work ahead of us, but together we can achieve an ambitious outcome of the fifth UN conference on LDCs in Doha, Qatar in January 2022. A new program of action that will guide us on how to achieve truly sustainable development and a better future for our people. With all that said, I declare the Africa Regional Review meeting closed. The meeting is adjourned.